Seminoles as well, like the Pamukla and the Calusa, Appalachian, palm leaves. Now, when you go up to North Georgia and North Carolina and the Cherokee country up there, you find the tribe that they're using the bark. And if you go even further north up into Virginia on the coast areas, some of the tribes will take the marsh grasses and reeds and they tie bundles and put them in rows, each row overlapping, just like we've used palm fronds or bark on the trees. So there are many kinds of Native American houses all over the country. Okay, let's show them this next display here. Everybody say farming. Farming. Come on, it's got farming. to be and Louie up here. Farming. farming! Farming! Many of the foods that people eat today are foods that Native Americans taught to the English, the Spanish, the French when they arrived. A lot of our foods. Just to name a few of them for you. Corn, beans, squash, potatoes, pumpkins, sunflowers, strawberries, blueberries, grapes, peppers, avocados, tomatoes, and even chocolate is food that comes from Native America. Now, chocolate didn't grow here. It comes from Central America. The tribes down there, like the Aztec and Mayan, utilize the cocoa bean, and that's where chocolate comes from. When the Spaniards arrived and met them, they served them drinks of chocolate. So, you like hot chocolate? You like chocolate? Thank us later. Anyways, the first three I named, corn, beans, and squash, is what we nicknamed the Three Sisters. Because those three sisters grew in the same spot, we planted all three seeds, corn, beans, squash, in the same hole. And as nature took its course, they would grow together, not meaning the plant, they would help each other. The corn stalk would grow very high and stern, very steady, and the beans grow on a vine which needs something to climb, so it climbs the stalk of corn. The ground is squash. It's also on a vine, but it's a vine that creeps along the ground and has giant leaves. And those big giant leaves gave shade to the hot, uh, to the roots and the soil from the hot summer sun. So the corn, beans, and squash, we called the three sisters, all three got planted in the same hole. Check this out. Farming tools. There's one made of a rock and wood. Here's one made of a buffalo's uh, shoulder blade. And here's one made out of shell. Now, if your mom has Tupperware at home, or ladies, do you have Tupperware? I've got your Tupperware hanging right back here. These are gourds, and the gourds were used for holding food. Now, this is a drying rack behind me. Since it's not dry, we have nothing on it. But I have my corn put away, ready to be hung up in the, the sun when it comes out, and it's for drying it. And one, in those days, there was no refrigeration. Food has to be dried using the sun or using the smoke of the fire. It's how we kept the food from rotting. If you don't smoke the fish or the deer meat, it won't be any good after a few days. And so they, they had to keep the food from rotting. Um, when the Spaniards arrived here in this area, there wasn't a whole lot of knowledge about preserving food back then except for salt. And then, and then other ways, but they were experimenting. And they noticed one of the ways that the, the uh, old tribes, like the Tamupo, was doing it, building big smoke racks over the fire and the smoke hitting the thing. The Spanish called it, they named it barbacoa. What do you think we call it today? <laughs> Barbecue, one of the favorites of the South, huh? And so uh, smoking the meat kept it from rotting and made it into jerky. And you could store the food away in the gourds. The gourds would be plugged up with corn cobs to keep the bugs from getting in there, keep the food dry, and keep it fresh. So that way, year-round, we can make our corn, not just when it's fresh and ready to eat, we can dry it, and we can have it for the winter time when we have no food in our garden. Again, you can see how when agriculture started to become the main way of living in the East, they stopped moving around, hunting wasn't as important, it was still, but they could stay in one place, they could build permanent dwellings, and they were farmers. So farming was a big part of our lives in the southeastern United States. 